Hello and welcome to my new video. Today it's all about space-time and dimensions. And many of you are probably thinking, man, these are some mind-blowing topics. But that's wrong. Because, believe it or not, we have to deal with them every day. I'll give you an example. You want to meet someone? Nothing easier than that. Just pick up your phone and call the other person. All you need to know is the right place and the right time. As with everything we do in life, whether it's appointments, events, or visits, we have to determine where and when they are to take place. If we leave out any of these two informations, it will probably be a very solitary or one-sided event. First, we need to specify a location. Any cell phone or navigation device is able to guide you to any spot on Earth, thanks to GPS. This technology uses coordinates to indicate any place on a map with great precision. This even works if you don't know the address, or if, for instance, you want to find a place somewhere in an open landscape. In geometry, for determining a location, you need two coordinates, which we call X and Y, or longitude and latitude. This is sufficient information at first, because every world map or city plan visualizes the Earth's surface as a two-dimensional plane ignoring at first glance all elevations. However, if you want to determine a specific point in a three-dimensional space, of course, you need that additional third coordinate. Let's assume your meeting point is on one of the upper floors of the Empire State Building. In addition to the coordinates X and Y, longitude and latitude, you also need the altitude, which we call Z. In this example, the Z coordinate could be both the height and the number of the corresponding floor of the Empire State. And yet, for your appointment to take place, these three coordinates are still not enough, since they only tell you about the location in space. What you are missing is the crucial information, when the event takes place. In other words, the time coordinate, which we call T. After all, it's no use to anyone, if you show up at the meeting point today, and the other person a couple of days or even weeks later. Now, you can use these four coordinates to clearly define any point in space and time. Or, more precisely, any point in four-dimensional space-time. So, next time, remember this. You're dealing with space and time every day, without even realizing it. And every time we talk about space and time, we are talking about dimensions. Space, as we perceive it, consists of three dimensions and time is commonly referred to as the fourth dimension. But how can we be sure that the universe has exactly three space dimensions and one time dimension? If you read science books, attend lectures, or watch YouTube videos about this topic, you will learn that science also allows for other conclusions, and that some scientists have completely insane theories about this. According to some of them, there are more and higher dimensions, but we are not able to perceive other than those we are familiar with. For example, the string theory assumes a 10 or 11 dimensional space-time. This is supposed to explain cosmological quantum phenomena, as well as the unification of the fundamental forces, the strong, the weak and the electromagnetic force, with gravity. According to others, our universe had numerous dimensions shortly after its creation, but most of them later collapsed. As Stephen Hawking explains, these dimensions became highly coiled or compressed since then, and therefore, they can only be captured mathematically. For many years, scientists have focused on the search for the next higher dimension. The existence of a fifth dimension is predicted by theories which attempt to unify Einstein's theory of relativity and the quantum theory. According to this view, our universe is just a membrane in a higher dimensional universe. All particles and forces are trapped within this membrane, with the exception of gravity. For this reason, the fifth dimension is thought to have an effect on the existence of black holes. However, all these hypotheses are in agreement that higher dimensions could exist, but they elude our perception. The problem is that nobody can really imagine a higher dimensional space, and our minds already struggle to understand something like a tesseract which is also referred to as a four-dimensional hypercube, or eight-cell. Our limited imagination makes it difficult for us, as we can only use the tools of maths and physics to describe these things. 
Physicists also need to find out how it is possible that we only perceive 4 out of 10 or 11 dimensions in everyday life. On the other hand, those higher dimensions could offer some fantastic characteristics, as things that seem completely impossible in our world could be totally normal and real in a higher dimensional space. For example, things like time traveling or moving through space faster than light. However, that's not really what this video is about, but rather to show why it is so difficult or even impossible to capture a higher dimensional space. It already starts with the fact that we have that fourth dimension of space-time, which is so different from the others, that scientists have not even recognized or understood it as such for centuries. Time is completely different from the other dimensions, and some even claim time is an illusion. To others, time seems to be the most important of all dimensions, since nothing in the universe would ever happen if time didn't exist. And if time is already so different from the other known dimensions, then how much more different would a fifth, sixth or even eleventh dimension be? Albert Einstein said that the significance of space and time only becomes clear if both are seen as a unit. This unit or entity is the so-called space-time continuum, which Hermann Minkowski postulated at the beginning of the 20th century. In this model, space and time are not independent from each other. Time is the fourth dimension of space-time, which in the four-dimensional world is equivalent and interchangeable with the three dimensions of space. It was this fundamental insight that allowed Einstein to develop his special theory into the general theory of relativity. Because space and time form a continuum, time alone can never be absolute. Instead, space and time are curved and warped. One of the causes of this effect is gravity. Every mass, including that of the Earth and the Moon, causes a curvature of space-time. However, this effect is particularly extreme in black holes, where space-time is theoretically completely intersected. The general relativity field equation makes it appear possible that these curvatures become wormholes, also known as Einstein-Rosen bridges. They could be sort of a tunnel or a shortcut through space-time. Albert Einstein and Nathan Rosen thought that black holes and white holes could be connected by such wormholes through space-time. However, these theoretical structures were considered to be extremely unstable. Similar effects also occur at extreme speeds, especially at the speed of light. But exactly this property of space-time, namely that it is not absolute, but gravity and speed have an influence on it, means that time doesn't run the same in every place. Actually, time could be considered a local phenomenon, as it could be different in every place in the universe. Yet, time always runs forwards since it describes the sequence of events. Therefore, it can only move in one direction. However, the concept of time must be considered relatively, as it is redefined for each location and each object. For us humans on Earth, these effects are imperceptible. Even the rather slow speed of rockets or space probes has no noticeable time dilation effect. Even on the Moon, time passes just as quickly or slowly as it does on Earth. However, Gravity indeed has an effect on time. The lower the gravity, the faster time goes by. In the course of about 80 years, a person who lives in the top floor of the Empire State Building would age 90 millionths of a second faster than someone who lives on the first floor. In our everyday reality, we do not perceive such extremely small periods of time. Therefore, time appears the same everywhere. But you must be aware that this is not true. Changes in space and time only become noticeable in the proximity of very large masses which exert extremely strong gravity, such as black holes, or at extreme speeds. Photons travel at the speed of light, so time stands still for these particles. However, these are only theoretical assumptions. The situation is similar with antimatter, which theoretically could move backwards in time, or with the possibility of turning a black hole into a time machine, since inside a black hole, gravity is so high, that time literally stands still. Nevertheless, most researchers do not believe that time travel is possible in reality. People can be in the same place twice, but never at the same time. This is because time is a qualitative dimension, 
while space is a quantitative dimension. Our universe, as we perceive it, consists of three space dimensions. But without time, as the fourth dimension of space-time, we would not be able to experience the universe, and we might well ask the philosophical question of whether the universe would exist at all. Also, we could not represent any time scale of the universe as we do here. Today we assume an origin, or if you like, a birth of the universe, which probably took place nearly 14 billion years ago. This event is known as the Big Bang. According to the current model, this very hot beginning was followed by a phase of inflationary expansion, in which the universe grew rapidly in a very short time. Space and time are interwoven in a single continuum that spans several dimensions. So, how many dimensions exist in space-time continuum? We don't know and we probably never will. There is the idea that we can never perceive higher dimensions, just because we are just three-dimensional beings stuck in a four-dimensional space-time. Let's imagine there were two-dimensional beings, who would basically be absolutely flat, since the second dimension of space is the plane. They cannot perceive our third dimension of space. And they probably never could, since higher dimensions always exist beyond the perceptual horizon. Perhaps, hypothetical beings, which exist in a specific dimension, always perceive their highest dimension in the same way as we perceive time. Accordingly, for two-dimensional beings in a three-dimensional space-time, our third dimension of space would be their dimension of time. To understand this admittedly very speculative hypothesis, let's take a look at the universe from the outside, not just at a specific time, but the whole space-time continuum, from beginning to end. However, let's make things a little easier and consider the entire history of a completely different universe. One that we are going to invent ourselves. And the special thing about this universe is that it has a three-dimensional space-time. In other words, only two space dimensions instead of three, and time as their third dimension. And let us assume that this universe is very small and inside a pencil. You probably think he's going nuts now. But why not? Everyone knows, there's a microcosm and a macrocosm. Who says that other universes have to be on a bigger scale than ours? Perhaps they are much smaller, even on an atomic or subatomic level. Especially on this scale, things seem almost vast. Didn't you know that atoms consist largely of empty space? Okay, I admit, what comes next is all just mind games. And not all of the following is meant completely seriously. Let's imagine that deep inside the pencil, there is a whole universe, and somewhere in this universe is a tiny spot, which is inhabited by incredibly small two-dimensional living and thinking beings, who perceive our third dimension Z, not as a dimension of space, but as a dimension of time, T. Therefore, their timeline is the length of the pencil lead from the tip to the eraser. The tip represents the birth of the universe, the eraser is the end. Unlike our own universe, which we don't really know about, here we can be quite sure about an origin and an end. Simply because it's a pencil, and it starts at the tip and ends at the eraser. Well, first of all, let's cut this pencil universe in half, lengthwise from beginning to end. Since our two-dimensional living and thinking beings only know and perceive the two space dimensions with the axes X and Y, their entire universe consists of a two-dimensional plane and this plane corresponds to the hexagonal cross-section of the pencil. Consequently, those beings can only move within this plane in the x and y axis. The third dimension, which for us is of course the length of the pencil or the z-axis, is perceived by the two-dimensional beings as the time value t. Their time axis, and thus their present, runs along the pencil lead, so the universe at any point in time would be the cross-section of the pencil at a specific point. The pencil tip represents the beginning of the universe and any point within the timeline, let's say, right here, would be the presence of the two-dimensional inhabitants of this universe. So let's imagine that this present is slowly moving along the pencil, and that for the inhabitants of the pencil, based on their subjective perception of time, it would take 100 billion years from the creation to the end of the pencil universe, that is, 
from the tip to the eraser. In fact, their own existence would only last a fraction of this whole time, which of course the inhabitants do not know. As they cannot travel through time, of course, it is also impossible for them to quickly jump forwards or backwards within their time axis, in order to see what the future holds or what happened at the beginning. These mind games are by no means absurd. According to the general theory of relativity, it is exactly the same with our real four-dimensional space-time. The evolution and change of our three-dimensional space, with time as the fourth dimension, from the Big Bang to now and further into the future, could be imagined as similar to such a two-dimensional plane, moving through a three-dimensional space as a two-dimensional space-time surface. Minkowski himself did not use a pencil, but a hyperboloid or double cone, to show the structure of space-time. At any given time, we only live in a three-dimensional layer of space-time, similar to the two-dimensional section through the pencil. Nevertheless, this diagram is reduced to only two space dimensions. We have a forward light cone in the positive time direction and a backward light cone in the negative time direction. Each light cone divides space-time into three areas. Into the past, the present, and the future. The hypersurface, and thus the observer of an event, is located at the intersection of the past and future cones, that is, in the present. The individual layers, our three-dimensional space, come together over time from beginning to end to form an overall picture that we three-dimensional beings perceive as a four-dimensional space-time. Only time enables us to experience the fourth dimension of space-time, similar to how our imaginary two-dimensional beings perceive time as the third dimension of the pencil. Let's get back to our two-dimensional inhabitants of the pencil universe. A subatomically small carbon-based life form, which we will call graffiti. They are so extremely small that an elementary particle, such as an electron or a proton, would be as large for them as a planet is for us. And let's imagine they would live on an electron orbiting the nucleus of a carbon atom. Unfortunately, the graffiti are not yet advanced enough to explore their universe. They lack the technological means to leave the electron on which they live and travel other neighboring carbon atoms. Quite apart from traveling through the almost 3 mm wide inner graphite region of the universe. So this two-dimensional species has not yet mastered intermolecular space travel. They are stuck on their electron and all they can do is observing a tiny part of their universe through telescopes. The graffiti home electron is located somewhere within the central area of their universe within the life-friendly graphite region. Only after using their most powerful telescopes and carefully analyzing the data, they finally discovered that unreachable and unimaginably far away around their habitable core region, which is favorable for the development of life, there is a hostile layer of wood. The graffiti were able to calculate the extent of this outer wooden zone surrounding their inner core, quite accurately to an unimaginably large size of 4 millimeters. However, besides that, they don't know much about this very distant region. Graffiti scientists, cosmologists and physicists were also able to calculate the origin of their universe and they found out that it simply came into being from virtually nothing, perhaps from somewhat like a quantum singularity. In other words, from an infinitely small and dense point. However, the graffiti scientists cannot say exactly why this happened or what existed before. In order to explain this, they invented a bizarre and not uncontroversial theory. In the first hot stadium, from our point of view, the pencil tip, the graffiti universe expanded rapidly and steadily gained mass. Graffiti cosmologists call this era the inflation because the universe expanded very fast and strongly. At this point, the whole thing bears some similarity to the assumed origin of our real universe. In addition, you might know that pencil leads, which are made of graphite and clay, are fired at around 900 degrees Celsius during production. It could therefore be said, they have a hot origin. But that's just a side note. Later, the structure of the universe apparently changed, as the growing layer of wood formed in the outer region of the universe, while the inner graphite region stopped growing and has maintained a constant diameter of 3 millimeters ever since. Despite decades of research, 
the graffiti have never really been able to clearly explain the physical mechanisms that caused all of this. Later again, the expansion of the whole pencil universe came to a complete standstill, and it took on a stable hexagonal shape that has not changed since then. Scientists found evidence that the outermost edge of the universe, beyond the wooden mantle, is limited by an impenetrable layer of varnish. Of course, none of the graffiti has ever seen the ominous wood, or the even more mysterious varnish layer. Graffiti cosmologists called this unknown layer, strange matter, or something like that, because it shows the puzzling tendency to close off the universe hexagonally and not round, as one might expect from a normal universe. Of course, some graffiti, who haven't studied astrophysics, are dissatisfied with such explanations. They argue that something as big and wonderful as their pencil cross-section could not possibly have come from nothing, and they claim that there must be an almighty creator. Although their argument is weak, this idea is correct. We know, of course, that the pencil goes back to an intelligent creator. Namely, the guy who makes pencils. However, the fact that this creator does not have a particularly emotional relationship with the pencil, or with the tip, or the subjective origin, would probably not please its inhabitants. Moreover, the pencil maker did not provide a starting point or a plan for how the cross-section of the pencil should develop in the future. He simply made a pencil. And not just one, but thousands of pencils. Hundreds of thousands. He created millions and millions of pencil multiverses. And the fact that this particular pencil would be inhabited and that the consciousness of its inhabitants would move lengthwise through the pencil should be not only completely irrelevant to the pencil maker, he doesn't even know, and he can't really imagine how one can live in a two-dimensional universe and perceive the third dimension as time. The idea that he himself had to live in that pencil and he had to take the wishes of his strange two-dimensional and ridiculously small creatures seriously in any way was something he would rightly regard as complete nonsense. Therefore, since it is virtually impossible for the creator to make contact with the graffiti and enlighten them about the true nature of the universe, their worldview must remain unsatisfactory and conceptually incomplete. In particular, they will never be able to fathom the purpose of their world from the inside, and may at some point they agree that, at the end of the day, everyone has to decide for themselves. Some of them certainly disagree and regard it as their sacred duty to serve their creator, possibly even with fire and sword, but without it being to their or anyone else's advantage. In addition, some of these fundamentalist graffiti, denying all knowledge and findings of science, and labeling them as conspiracy lies, claim that the universe is not a two-dimensional section, but only a one-dimensional string. And what about the end of the universe? Armageddon? The Last Judgment? If there are outstanding prophets among the graffiti, or cosmologists, although the difference between the two professions is rather fluid, they might be able to foresee the end of the universe. Otherwise, they will never know how it ends. I'm sure, the fundamentalist graffiti have their own quite simple ideas about this. Probably something with broken leads or horrible paper demons. Of course, we know how the pencil universe ends. Unlike the graffiti, who will never be able to do so, we can simultaneously perceive both the beginning and the end of the pencil universe. We therefore know that in a distant future, billions of years from the graffiti's present, a strange metallic shimmering shell will emerge at the edge of the universe, still beyond the distant wooden mantle and the mysterious layer of varnish made of strange matter. Shortly afterwards, the entire universe turns into a gigantic eraser, which eliminates everything, including space, time, and all matter, until finally everything disappears forever into nothingness. Needless to say, that we would be able to avert this. As omnipotent, pan-dimensional beings, we could intervene and bring about a completely different fate for this universe. For example, by removing the eraser and sharpening the pencil's rear end instead. Or something like that. I suppose I'd better stop this now. Otherwise, I'll get some fantasies of almightiness. Thanks for watching. I hope you had some fun. I would be glad about your comment.
a like or a subscription. See you next time on Stargazer Channel.